So, 2017 has finally come to a close. So, uh, for the past couple of years, I made my list for my top 10 favorite horror movies um, each year. And um, I did one in 2015, last year, and now I need to make one for this year. So, here we go once again. This is my top 10 favorite horror movies of 2017. The reason I make these lists is because horror is possibly my favorite genre of all time. My favorite movie is a horror movie, which is more of a thriller, but still. I have watched horror movies for so long, and today I'm counting down my picks for what I thought were the truly best, whether if they were scary or how well they were told and didn't have a lack of originality or anything like that. But anyways, let's get started. But of course, before I start this list, let me let me start off by giving out shout-outs to a few honorable mentions, which are Mother, Jigsaw, Cult of Chucky, and Life. And I haven't seen Raw, so that and the other things that I mentioned will not be on this list. But anyways, let's get started. Number 10, A Cure for Wellness. This is one that I did not get to see in theaters, but whether I rented it, um, although yeah, I did rent it, and um, I wasn't too sure about going in because, uh, you know, with all the negativity that it got and the fact that it's almost two and a half hours long, I didn't get the chance. That wasn't really the reason. The reason why is because I wasn't in the theater for too long. So, but watching the movie, I really thought it was an underrated gem in my opinion. You know, I thought it was well told, well acted, and it certainly wasn't a perfect film. But from a visual standpoint, I mean, it wasn't all that scary. It felt more like a psychological thriller. But on in all honesty, it was really just a very well made film that I feel like should be watched again. Um, for like people who. Well, I don't know, but all I can say is A Cure for Wellness was a really well done movie that certainly did deserve to make this list. Number 9, The Void. Now, this is one that I didn't feel like it's going to be a film for everybody, and it really isn't. People do hate on this movie a lot, but uh, personally, I'm still one of the ones that actually really enjoys this film. Um, it's out on DVD, um, the, the Blu-ray is like hard to find, Like I'm not sure it's exclusively from this website, but I don't know, but I feel like I could just watch it one time and say, hey, I actually had a lot of fun with that movie, and it does feel like it could become a cult classic in the future, because there's a lot of well-done effects for the gore and stuff. It reminds me if it were, like, a remake of The Thing, pretty much. If you want, if you want many more things I want to say about this movie, or you want to hear my opinion, more of my opinion on this movie, go check out my review of this movie, as well as my review for every single one of these movies, although I haven't reviewed all these movies, spoiler alert, but, uh, yeah. But anyways, The Void, I think, is a very excellently made horror film for a special visual effects and special effects, uh, film. It's mostly in the sci-fi horror genre, and this isn't going to be the only sci-fi horror film on this list, but all I can say is The Void, you definitely deserved a spot on this list. Number eight, Happy Death Day. This is one of the biggest surprises I've had in quite a while. I did not think that I would like this movie that much, but when going into it, I was actually really, really surprised. Well, this isn't going to be like the next big classic horror film that it's going to be one of the greatest horror films of all time. No, I'd say it's a fun and entertaining uh, slasher horror film that surprisingly for a PG-13 rating, it still is very entertaining. I thought performance-wise from the main actress, who was actually really memorable in this film, especially for, like, near the end with her re the relationship with her dad that happens, like, in, like, around the last act of the movie, spoiler alert, but, you know, it does have some comedic elements and some very unique horror elements, even though if the, if the kills weren't really all that special, that, like, they're not really original and stuff, they're just kills that you've seen a bunch of times before, but it certainly is a really entertaining horror film that I can see myself probably watching again, once again in the future, you know, with my friends and stuff, if you want to have, like, a horror movie night or something like that, but all in all, Happy Death Day is a solid and fun uh, horror film that doesn't take itself too seriously, and that's why I'm putting it on the list. Number seven, Alien Covenant. Now, here's the thing. I like this as a horror film. Not a film for, you know, like, getting into any characters or anything like that. I thought this was a fun 
horror film. I found it to be just a regular horror film. I could enjoy it as a regular horror film. And while, yeah, it doesn't get anything impactful in, like, the beginning of the movie, but for the most part, that's what I enjoyed about the movie. It's it's a fun and exciting horror film, like, from the kills and stuff, and it is a visually stunning movie. Now, this movie gets criticized a lot, more than Prometheus did, but I really enjoyed Prometheus. And it isn't a film for everybody, but for the most part, I thought it was a visually well-done horror film, and it doesn't bring anything, like, new to the Alien franchise. Like, I can see why the film did bomb and was a big disappointment from the box office standpoint. I mean, some critics liked it. It was certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, but then it just went down to 68, which is kind of a bummer, but, uh, yeah. All in all, Alien Covenant, I thought, was a solid horror film. You know, it is fun for, like, its horror elements, like, of course, the chest-bursting scenes and uh, for the blood scenes and stuff like that, and that death scene in the shower. I should just quit spoiling here. And it ending does impact for another sequel, which, let's see how that turns out. Maybe Ridley Scott might end up doing another Alien movie, even though this film bombed. I mean, hell, Martian was a big success, so, yeah. Number six, The Devil's Candy. Now, this actually was kind of surprising. I haven't heard a whole lot about this film, but I didn't review it, and I think I should watch it a second time before I should. Like, I, I don't remember a whole lot about it. From, from my, what I remember, it was a very solid horror film. You know, there was, like, uh, this this thing with uh, a girl's dad and something. But I, I, I'm sorry. I can't remember a whole lot from it, but don't worry. It's on Netflix again. I feel like I should watch it again. So, kind of, it's kind of a good thing that I didn't review it, but what I remember, I remember liking it more than the first four films that were on this list, but, uh, you know, it wasn't necessarily a whole downright scary film, but from that opening scene, I knew I was getting into something, and I certainly did. All in all, The Devil's Candy is, is a really good horror film, and I need to watch it again because, seriously, um... It's been a while, but I remember in the end credits, they played that song that was like the opening to Zombie Land or something. So that's the best I can give you. But definitely need to see this one again because I feel like I want to review it. Number five, Annabelle Creation. This is another surprisingly good horror film because this has the Ouija and Ouija origin of, of evil um, formula because, you know, the first Annabelle movie wasn't so good, but the sequel which is a prequel, was actually better, given the fact that this was from the director of Lights Out, which was a really good horror film. And this certainly was a good um, follow-up to the Conjuring universe. I feel like this was certainly something that could work in the Conjuring universe. And once again, Annabelle, the creepy Annabelle doll, is scary as ever. And uh, from the opening sequence to, like, the rest of the film which actually has some really good performances even from the kids and for the most part Annabelle Creation is a solid and well done uh, horror sequel prequel to a not so good prequel if you know what I mean but for the most part yeah I can definitely say this this certainly does have some really good horror elements and it is a well deserving on this list number four it Comes at Night. Now, this was the horror film of the summer. Well, I couldn't... Well, um... Yeah, I think it. I think it is my favorite horror film of the summer. Because this was a very creepy one. And, uh... This is certainly a film, a mind-bending movie. Critics really enjoyed this movie. As for myself, as well. But for users, yeah. Uh, users didn't like this movie so much. But, uh... You know, it's like the Wiz, it, the the the, Wiz, the the witch. You know, 2016 is the witch. Not a not a whole lot of users liked it, liked it, but uh, critics really praised the film, and I'm one of those people that really had a really good time with this movie. Now, people might find the film slow and boring. Well, it is. It does get slow on some parts. It really does have some really creepy elements, and it does. And it's a horror film that makes a lot of sense once you do get into the film and you do watch it. And I'm not going to spoil anything. You can watch, uh... It's just certainly a horror film that needs to be experienced before judged. 
But anyways, definitely check um check out It Comes at Night. I feel like it's really worth your time. Alright, we're getting close. We're getting to the top three, guys. Now, my pick for number three is Gerald's Game. I recently just watched this one from Netflix, and this is a Netflix original horror film from a Stephen King novella, and it was really just, wow. Mike Flanagan, Mike freaking Flanagan knows how to direct horror films. I mean, he did it with Oculus, Ouija Origin of Evil, uh, Hush, which is another Netflix horror film. He knows how to direct horror films. He's just like James Wan, pretty much. You know, this is a this was a quite an interesting movie. I did not know what to expect. Like, this is about a girl or a woman whose uh, husband just died after playing some sort of game, and she's handcuffed to a bed, and she has these memories and tries to figure out how to get herself out while there's a dog there. But, you know, the dog isn't all that she has to worry about. And um, there isn't a whole lot to say about this movie because I feel like you need to experience it. It's out on Netflix right now. You definitely need to see it if you're interested, if you're a fan of the novella, and... Uh, if you're a fan of Stephen King in general and you want to watch a movie on Netflix, you want to watch a good horror film on Netflix, I certainly recommend Gerald's Game. This is a really interesting one and intriguing one. And yeah, definitely check this one out. And it definitely makes my list. All right, guys, we're close. We're at the top two now. What is number two? And what is number one? Well, first, we need to figure out what number two is. Number two. My pick for number two is it. That's right, guys. You're probably surprised this isn't number one on my list, but there was just one more that I liked more, but let me talk about it first. It was not a letdown at all. I was it was just what I was hoping for. It has it's it's both scary and intriguing. It's a very good cast of child characters as well as Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise the Dancing Clown. He does a phenomenal performance and it is one of the better looking horror films in quite some time and the fact they gave it that R rating makes it the more entertaining and the more I don't know what to say but this truly was uh, I'm just th thrilled and I, I it's a film I still can't stop thinking about. I'm just happy of how good it was and how intense it was. I want it on Blu-ray right now. I wish it could be on, on Blu-ray this December. I wish I could get it for Christmas or something. But no, we just gotta wait one more month, guys. But yeah, all in all, it is one of the best horror films of the year and probably one of the best horror films of the decade. Alright, guys. What delivered the most scares? What delivered the most thrills? What is my pick for the best horror film of 2017, you may ask? I know, you probably, you, you, you know what it is. You, you, you know. I don't need to explain myself. But anyways, let's get into it. My number one favorite horror film of 2017 is none other than Get Out. Yeah, guys, I bet you knew this was coming. I bet you knew from the beginning you clicked on this video. I, I think you knew that it was going to be Get Out. I, I still can't stop thinking about how great this film was. Um, I've watched it twice now, both in the theater and on Blu-ray. This is one of the best horror experiences I've had in the theaters in quite some time. I was just sitting there, there was a full house of people, it was Friday night, and we were just cheering on, especially near the end of the film. Jordan Peele, for the first film he's directed, he's delivered a solid film, both delivering really good laughs and scares as well as a new as a new as a new well done cast of characters it certainly is something that we honestly haven't seen before and Jordan Peele knew what he was talking about in this movie and if you go check out my review of this movie my after I saw video on this movie then you'll definitely know what I'm talking about but all in all not only is this one of the not only is this my pick for the best horror film of the year but it's also one of the best movies of 2017 and I highly recommend you check it out if you haven't seen it all in all get out is my number one favorite horror film of 2017 well that's it for horror of 2017 so let's get forward for next year and yeah guys um I will be getting better editing software this is just something 
for my phone. I'm sorry if the texting was misplaced and stuff. I know I couldn't fix that or anything. But I'm stuck with this until I get new editing software, you know. But uh, I hope you guys understand. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And hopefully I'll be making my pick for the top 10 video games of the year soon. And stay tuned for next week after Christmas when I do my picks for the top 10 or 15 or 20 best movies of the year. And, of course, the top 10 worst movies of the year. Yeah, I still have to make that list as well. But don't worry, I've seen quite enough shitty movies. But, anyways, uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys later. Word out.